Colin and Penelope, they hardly have any screen time together. And the screen time they have together, half of it is the carriage scene. They completely missed out on the opportunity to have Colin fight for her. serious when I'm gonna hold the mic. <laughs> this is my Bridgerton season 3 review, which is about Colin and Penelope, but was it even about Colin and Penelope? Because that's how bad season 3 was. So what made it more disappointing was the fact that season 2 was so, so good. It was so perfect. Ugh! can't even describe how much I love Anthony. I love them. I adore them. Any shot any scene they were in in season three i was eating it up i was like please just stay okay you're leaving come back oh you're back you're gone again tell me if i'm wrong but did they ever actually announce they were pregnant because they were about to and then cressida stood up and was like i'm lady whistle down but then i don't even remember them telling anyone they were they were pregnant but then all of a sudden everyone knew I've seen on TikTok, I've seen articles, I've seen that people are not happy. I posted a TikTok and was like, okay, is season three just that bad or is it because season two was elite? Yes and yes. I didn't watch Bridgerton until about two months ago. I saw the trailer for season three and I was like, dang, that looks good. Time to get on that train. Season two was just so good because the tension, the slow burn, the angst, the groveling, the romance, everything about it was perfect. Except we didn't get a wedding. Why do we get everyone else's wedding? Even weddings we don't care about. Oh gosh, I just had the biggest heart attack. I was like, am I even recording? Guys, this has happened before where I talk for like 10, 15 minutes and I didn't press record. Do you know how sad that is? At that point, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Started season three with very high hopes because the season two was immaculate. I even watched Queen Charlotte and that was, it wasn't my favorite, but I liked it better than season one. So I was like, oh, season three is just gonna give. We've built up this tension from season one and season two about Colin and Penelope. This is amazing. It's gonna be so good. And the writers and directors were like, we wanted to do season three about them because we just feel like it's time for their story to happen because it's had all this buildup. So we'll just do Benedict's later. I liked Colin and Penelope better as friends because they had more romance as friends than they did as a couple. And I 100% stand by that because what the heck was that? So we start off and we have kind of a love triangle. We have Penelope be like, I don't want to be the wallflower anymore. I'm going to make my own way. I want to be courted. I want to be married. We have Lord Debling. Honestly, why was I kind of rooting for them? That's how bad they fumbled the romance with Colin and Penelope was that I was kind of rooting for Lord Debling. I was like, okay. Penelope has accepted the fact that she wants a practical marriage. Obviously, she loves Colin but that is not reciprocated. Can we talk about how they completely missed out on the opportunity to have Colin fight for her? Instead of making Colin understand what was on the line, instead of him and her becoming close as he gave her dating lessons, that was completely missed. They hardly had any screen time together. Their chemistry was gone. We do not know who Colin is. The three things I know about Colin is he hates Lady Whistledown, he likes to travel, and he writes about his travels. And I feel like when he emerged this season, there wasn't any development other than he s sleeps with two women at the same time at some point. He writes about intimacy and feeling lonely on his travels, which boohoo, wow. Like with Simon and Anthony, like I felt for them. Oh, Colin, I don't feel for you, bro. You have zero personality this season, zero, none, zip, it's gone. And now you wink at ladies. That's some development. With Penelope's, we had a lot of Lady Whistledown. This season just gave us not at all what we wanted because for me, I didn't care about the development with Lady Whistledown and not to jump into it, but I thought that reveal was totally anticlimactic. She's like, I'm just fascinated by you all. That's why, and everyone's like, oh, ha ha, clap, clap, it's all fine. No, this woman has been writing shiz on everyone, ruined your marriage, ruined your social status, ruined your jobs, and you're all fine with it because she actually was just fascinated by you guys? Now you want to be in Lady Whistledown and you respect her? No. I'm reading the second book right now, so I don't know how the book goes in the third. So a lot of what I'm saying is just strictly based on the TV show, but that reveal was really lame 
and I'm not even sure how they could have done it better, but honestly, I just hate the lack of consequences because I didn't even like Penelope this season. I really liked her the past seasons. I was excited to see her romance, but this just made me not like her. Why wasn't she just doing what she should have done? I know they were trying to build the tension and the angst by having her wait to tell Colin that she was Lady Whistledown, but really, girl, you're marrying him. You are marrying him and you haven't told him your biggest, darkest secret. It was just frustrating. It was frustrating. That should have happened. That whole arc with Lady Whistledown and their marriage trouble, to me, when Colin was like, Lady Whistledown is you, Penelope. I see her in you. I don't. They're not the same person at all. I just missed my Penelope that I knew. I liked the Wallflower better. I'm glad she can be herself and be confident in her skin there was a lot of issues with that and also the whole thing with eloise and her eloise just quickly forgives her when it becomes too dramatic which i am glad they made up i was totally on eloise's side because i would feel the exact same way okay penelope i was really liking theo and you freaking ruined it because you were worried about me but what you should have done is talk to me about it and not write crap on me that's that but the main issue we have here with season three is it's about Colin and Penelope, but guess who's not really in it? Colin and Penelope. They hardly have any screen time together. And the screen time they have together, half of it is the carriage scene. Also, I feel like they got married way too quick and then he was just angry. Gosh, there's so much to unpack here. Just the whole scenes of him, you know, his big heroic moment was supposed to be saving the air balloon. That part was so cheesy and honestly so unnecessary. And I don't like how they changed Colin's personality. I liked that he was just an innocent boy who sang songs with his family. He was Colin. Like, that's who Colin was. Obviously, we have a part where Penelope's like, that's the Colin I love. But he never, like, went back to the Colin that he was. And we didn't even know who he was or who he is now because we hardly know Colin at all. Again, his development was awful. I was reading an article and I thought this was really interesting. I cannot type with my gloves. Okay, someone took the time to actually map out the screen time of all the different plots. In part one of season three, we have a lot going on. We have like 220 minutes of runtime. So we have like the Colin and Penelope romance main plot. Then we have Francesca Bridgerton's entrance into the marriage subplot. Then we have the Mondrich family's entrance into the upper class subplot, which I did not like that arc at all because one, I don't care. I'm sorry, I really don't care. I liked the diversity they brought to Bridgerton. I liked seeing the lower class. We don't see the lower class at all. That's why I like Theo in last season too is because that's the lower class. We only see the Dukes and the Viscount. I liked the Mondriches. I liked him having the bar. And I was honestly sad when it was done because that was more interesting than them becoming upper class. The Featherington sisters race to make a baby. That was actually funny. I will say two things made this season bearable for me. Number one, Cantony. I love Kate and Anthony so much and they 100% made it worth it for me to watch because I just love them so much. And then the Featherington sisters and their plot with Penelope was more interesting than any other relationship Penelope had this season, especially with her sister becoming jealous with the attention she was receiving from her mom and, and her complimenting Penelope and actually meaning it. Like that was the closure I needed and I didn't know I needed. Benedict's whole story was i was honestly didn't even see most of it because again i've been angeled it but tell me why that freaking matters number one know that he's not going to end up with her and i feel like benedict could have had some character development in a different way because i feel like all of his seasons have just been about his sexuality and it should have honestly been more about just his character because i like his silly side i want to see more of his silly sides but i want to see his emotional side and i guess that's obviously what next season is going to be about but i feel like they could have developed his character and romance differently than having a threesome i'll just stop there violet bridgerton's second chance romance it was fine I mean, it kind of started with Queen Charlotte. I was fine with that. I'll be okay with that. And then Kate and Antony, Bridgerton's newlywed minor subplot. Yeah, very minor. They were hardly in it. She kind of makes this chart. Only like 56% of the season was about Colin and Penelope, but then she breaks it down even more. She breaks it down to 56% of Colin and Penelope includes the time they interact, the times they're together but do not interact, the times that he thinks about her, the times that she thinks about him, Penelope and Lord Debling, and broken friendship with Penelope, and 
Eloise. That even includes like Cressida, her subplot with Penelope and Eloise because Lady Whistledown is kind of mixed with Penelope. So that makes up the 56%. The percentage of 56% of Bridgerton, only 28% is actually Penelope and Colin together. So the lack of them is insane. We had way more every other thing than them. That's what I like about Bridgerton is that each season focuses on the couple and you can develop that. And Kate and Anthony were like the perfect sample because they were so focused on, they were so developed. Before part two was released, this girl did the math and she said that the amounts that Colin and Penelope were spent together were 33 minutes and seven of those minutes were in the carriage. That leads us to the carriage scene. I really wanted some groveling. We know that the Bridgertons can grovel. They can pine. I wanted it. It was so quickly, it was kind of just jarring how quickly Colin fell in love with Penelope. He just started to really like lust after her when she was eating that cupcake and like wiping it from her mouth. He was like, oh my gosh, I'm in love. When he cut his hand and she was all like, let me help you with that. She is my friend. I want her to be more. Honestly, I wanted more of a realization, but I also wanted more of a fight and I wanted them to interact more because when he offered to help her getting to know guys and being courted, he har he actually did crap. He did nothing. The whole plot of him helping her was quickly stopped by Whistledown because she wrote about herself. Their lessons were like two seconds long. Okay, that was good. Next time. But I just really needed more interaction. I needed him to slowly realize that his best friend that he's been riding on his travels is the love of his life. And it just happened so quick. And before you know it, he's like, marry me. And she's like, okay. I also wanted Penelope to have a backbone. I wanted more of a confession. Every Bridgerton season has such good dialogue. And their dialogue was even lacking. You know, the most romantic thing he said was, I'd rather be asleep because that's where I can dream of you or whatever. There were things they said to each other, you know, she's like, you are the most charming. And he was like, you're the most hardworking. But they hadn't even interacted enough to really have more knowledge of each other. And then they sleep together, <laughs> which I felt was very rushed. Then he just felt pressured to be married to her. And then that just caused issues with Lady Whistledown. The romance was gone because in their wedding, the most romantic part was like them dancing. But then you just knew that he had grudges and they needed to sort it out and they weren't talking to each other. <laughs> and then they finally figured out and then they have a baby. Like, that's literally what I felt like happened. But it's just like, boom, boom, boom. And then he's like, okay, I won't sleep on the couch anymore. Hm. He says, because I envied your power as Whistledown. So now he doesn't even hate Whistledown. He just has been jealous of her. I wasn't sensing that at all. Because I think Whistledown has done a lot more than make him jealous. She has like ruined your courting with that one girl in the first season and spoke ill on your entire family. And you're just like, oh, I was just jealous. I'm talking way more than I thought about this. <laughs> I just feel like Colin was like, a man simp child who likes to travel. He was just a puppy who wanted his toy and then when he couldn't get his toy then he finally got his toy and didn't know what he wanted because he realized that she was Lady Whistledown. Just where where did they ever get to know each other as like lovers instead of just best friends? Like I know they were best friends so they knew each other very well but it was just so taken up by everything else and none of their scenes together gave me butterflies. It didn't make me want to scream of joy. It didn't make me feel anything because they were focused on everyone else. Cressida is a whole nother thing because the first part, I feel like they were trying to humanize her, to make her human, trying to make us understand her, it's making her a real person so that we could connect with her and sympathize with her, only to drag her out and hang her to die. Literally, why did they, why do we spend so much time humanizing her if she's just gonna be the villain? We wanted her to actually have some type of redemption. I was all about the redemption arc. And then she claimed to be Lady Whistledown and that was actually horrible. I did not like that at all. And then Eloise and Penelope, love Eloise, totally on her side. Didn't care for them fighting, but honestly what made it worse was that she was friends with Cressida only to not even give her a redemption arc and then everyone to hate her again and her to be like, why was I ever friends with her? I guess because I wanted to make you mad, Penelope. Also, I love Eloise and Benedict like relationship and he was like we need to sit on these swings and have more conversations and just be lost together I love that yes those are my favorite scenes I love them I just love the Bridgerton family I love the sibling relationships also when Kate had that conversation with Colin it was so good right before his wedding night and Anthony also was there and he was like our marriage is hard what the best I just love them and when he was like let's move to India Kate and she was like don't make me love you more and she did her like, her classic like, 
face. Colin needed a stronger story, he needed a stronger romance with the Penelope, and he needed to court her more throughout the season. Can we talk about Francesca? Lord Kilmartin. I actually thought their romance was cute, it was a little focused on a lot. Honestly, it could have been better if they really like built it up more, maybe during her season. What I know about the book, Lord Kilmartin dies and she falls in love with his cousin, which is Michael, but then they make her Michaela. My killer. But what bothered me, first of all, if you're gonna switch roles, actually don't even switch roles because you're not following the book. You can represent in other ways. I don't care. But if you're changing the canon, like it's canon that she ends up with a man. And then to introduce the cousin and for Francesca to be all like, oh, uh, 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 hi. No, she loves, she loves Lord Kilmartin. She cares for him. Maybe not in the stereotypical way, the Bridgerton way, and she mentions that. She is married, she's in love with this man, and then to introduce his cousin and be all like starstruck? Like, what the heck was that? I feel like it was so forced, like, oh, we need to make sure that everyone knows that she's gonna fall in love with her. No, like she has no idea. She doesn't fall in love with Michael till later, and it's a boy. <sighs> I like the part where they let out the butterflies, the sisters. <laughs> okay, and then we jump and Colin and Penelope have a baby and they kiss and every season kind of like jumps. I mean, Kate and Anthony, they're like playing croquet and that was so cute, gave me the butterflies, but Colin and Penelope just didn't give me butterflies even at the end with their baby and doesn't she deliver the air because she had the only boy. It wasn't satisfactory at all. I liked her relationship with her mom a lot. Those were awesome conversations and I really like her mom even more now. Her mom is always like a morally gray character, but I love how she just feels her calling to be a mother. Season four, that's gonna be a tricky one. <laughs> I don't care about the lack of Simon and Daphne, honestly, like I'm not a huge fan of them anyways. Didn't even like the book either. That's fine with me. I just like Kate and Anthony. Honestly, maybe the hype for Bridgerton is just like dead to me because this was so underwhelming. I just don't know what the heck they were doing. They had way too many agendas. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I'm crazy. Also, I've been struggling with health issues lately, so I haven't been posting as often. So if you could also just keep me in your prayers and stuff so I can start feeling better and do this more often. For those of you who care, I got my first YouTube paycheck and I bought this dress. <laughs> Dearest gentle Rita. I can't do the accent. Dearest gentle Rita. Rita? Reader. I'm done. Love you guys. Bye.